Producer error. <laughs> Okay. Guys, glad you're here. Thanks for joining us. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And uh, you can click the icon to get notifications on when we have new episodes, but we're typically here every week. We've got some great stuff in the pipeline for all of you who are here on YouTube. Yeah. And if you have behind the scenes ideas that you would like to see, if questions that you have you want to ask, you can ask them here in the comments. Right here. So let's get rolling. question today is why is it so hard to talk about sex all right um, I have a, an iTunes review it says I found this podcast about 10 months after finding out about my husband finding out that my ha husband had an affair it truly saved me because all they say speaks truth to me it helped me make sense and also see the big picture of things it also majorly helped my husband fight his addiction and get tips and tricks on why he felt certain ways or what to do in situations. Guys, this is truly inspired and heaven sent. Wow, thank you. It's yeah, awesome. Thank you, thank you. Those, those uh, reviews mean a lot because as you review, it rates the ratings and reviews on iTunes boost who sees our podcast. So It, it might be hard to share our podcast because of the the topic that we talk about or whatever but one way that you can share it is just by rating it and reviewing it and because it, it gets it out there it's, so. it's more searchable or it's more easily found when searching so yeah. all right guys why is it so hard to talk about sex so um, sexuality and spirituality have uh, something in common and what that train is train wreck <laughs> they can turn into that yes um, you know the other thing they have in common is uh, they they produce some of the, the best things in life um, we're talking about connection and um, the, the thing they have in common is, is vulnerability spirituality is inherently vulnerable um, sexuality is is vulnerable as well and so it's it's intimacy when you when you're talking sex when you're talking spirituality you're you're getting to the deeper stuff you're 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 you know down to the soul level a little bit and um <clears throat> you know to be able to talk openly about sex in a relationship is important um, but there needs to be some foundation there in order to to have the ability to to have those conversations and that foundation can get busted, and then the intimacy breaks down. Um, talking about sex can become cult in a relationship. So, what's your guys' experience with this? Well, I'm gonna go backwards a little bit to September. That's why we're talking about this. And I've had uh, a lot of people reach out saying, you know, we're not ready to do September to have sex every day. We're not ready to move our relationship forward. And these are people who may or may not share our story. Right. But they are choosing to have the hard conversations. Even if it's just once a week, it's better than what they've been doing for the eight years or ten years of marriage. Right. And those are some of my favorite comments to read because they're people who are stepping into that really vulnerable place. Yes. And saying, I, I'm a little unsure here, but I want to make progress. Right. I like it. And, and, and the reality is, is as we do an episode like this, you know, why is it so difficult to talk about sex? <clears throat> we can't really answer that question because every relationship is in a different place. And the reasons why it's difficult could be for all, all, all kinds of different reasons. Um, but what, what Ashton just said is really important. Uh, the reality is, is as an individual, you are a sexual being and your sexuality is very important to who you are. And depending on where that relationship is at or not, um, it, it's important that you start to work toward being healthy enough on an individual level so that you can be healthy enough, enough on, a, on a relational level and start to work toward these conversations, right? Yeah. And, and, and you know, sex timber is not about having passionate um, sex every day where, you know, it's about connecting in some way that works you toward a healthy sex life. Yes. Right? 
So I'm just sitting here thinking, why is it so hard? Why is sex such a hard to sex such a hard topic for, for me? Or to say. Or to say, <laughs> totally. Um, and I'm just reflecting about my early childhood experience with sex. And I know for sure that um, as it relates to just talking about sex, the, the conversation about sex that I can remember at its earliest stage with my dad is when he pulled a Playboy from my hand in a gas station in Butte, Montana, when I was like seven. You he, in Butte, Montana, <laughs> in seven, a gas station, yeah. exactly. That's probably like 10 feet station attendant who was watching me, right? And, uh, you know, this is back in the day when those weren't even like wrapped, hidden or anything. And he pulled it out of my hand and put it back and said, don't do that again. <laughs> so, it's like, so it's like, what the hell am I supposed to think about sex if that's the only conversation I ever had with my dad about it? And then I can't think of any conversations I had ever with my mom um, about sex. So it, why is it so hard? Well, one of the obvious ones. We never did. <laughs> you never talked about so, it. So, exactly. Yeah. We never, ever talked about it just to begin with. And and so there wasn't, number one, this, there, there wasn't ever permission, not, not even permission, like the idea and the concept of talking about sex was, was never on the table um, and it was never modeled. So, that, so, so that's just one thing. It just wasn't like an okay topic to talk about ever. And it was primarily surrounded around don'ting right right yeah and and so there it, it's like this two-headed monster from when i was young right they don't ever talk about it and when they talk about it it's always like don't my, my mom um huge props to her um because she was always willing and open to talk about it with with us um and i think she pulled out a, a book with stick figures or something when i was a kid and she was, my dad wasn't. My dad acted like he was, but he was awkward and never really went there with us. Um, but I, I, I think you, you are right, Kobe. Whatever's modeled to you at a young age. Um, you know, another thing that happened is when you get into junior high and high school, you're talking about sex all the time. But it's like joking around, and like you're making jokes with your buddies and this and that. And it's like, it's, to have a serious conversation about sexuality and who you are, and you know, is different than than that. So to have an awkward conversation with your parents or a funny conversation with your friends is one thing, but to be vulnerable and own who you are to another person, especially an, an intimate partner, um, that takes some risk. So, so, so what's yes, 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 yes. <laughs> to everything you just said for for me. And okay, so so the conversations that Ashlyn and I had about sex. I think there was like one before he got married. Um, and it was just this really awkward, like hesitant, it just, just it, it was like writing with my left hand. <laughs> it was just awkward and it was hard and it was weird. But, um, but, but the point is, is that the, the first, like we didn't have any conversations like on our honeymoon, but when we came home, then there be, then this cloud of, of shame settled in on our marriage. Yeah. And so the energy that I had about sex was um, was shame based. I was afraid. I was scared. I of being found out, but because I had no um, ability, I had no skill set. I had no ability to have a dialogue about sex and how I was feeling about sex. That it was like I couldn't even talk about what I was feeling. And so it was just, I was entirely inept, just in word. You make a good point in that, you know, how, how connected is shame to sex for you? Because if, if sex and shame are, are best buddies. They're like peas and carrots then, for me. Then you're not going to go out of your way like to, to say, Denny. hey, let's talk about, let's talk about some, some sexual things. You're going to avoid that with everything that you've got. Mm -hmm. Because, it, you know, and so, and so if, if you have a sex addiction from a young age, you're hiding a lot of things that's going on with you sexually. Oh yeah. Um, you're not going to go want to have open, honest, authentic conversations with a partner um, because you've been hiding so much, especially when it comes to, to do with sex. Yeah. Indeed. And it's so interesting to me. This all makes so much sense just to hear it. I guess voice. It's 
and Even thoughts in me? my head. Yeah, huh. and it makes sense to hear it out loud, I guess, and yeah. piece together. So thank you yeah. both. Um, I will also say, um, for me, it would be like, how can I be so vulnerable to have sex with you and then so disconnected that I can't even talk to you. Like, it didn't make sense. They're yes. both so vulnerable. Yes. Right? Wait, wait, wait. Repeat what you just said, because I don't think I followed you. Okay, so I'm willing to have sex with you. Right. But I'm not willing to talk about it. It just seems, like, crazy. Well, right? it's, Ashton, I've <laughs> seen wow. the extremes of that, you know. Um, wow. Like, like, women with good girl syndrome, like, a lot of it, tons of shame around sexuality, a lack of education, not understanding what it really is, um, don't really know what it is, but yet they have five kids, you know? And it's like, you know, our sexuality is going to persist, whether we like it or not. Yeah. Uh, we are sexual beings. And so if we can talk about, if we can, just because you can't talk about sex doesn't mean that you're not going to engage and, 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 and have sex. Having sex is less vulnerable um, in a lot of ways than actually having open, honest conversations it, about sex. I think it is. It yes. sounds so crazy saying that, but for me, even just starting to get educated on my own without someone pushing me or saying, you need this, which did happen for a long time. Totally did. Um, was those, was the baby steps into, I can, I can sit in this. Well, I think you just nailed it, which is if you want to be able to talk about sex openly, you need to own your own sexuality. Um, you're not going to go, Ashton, you're not going to go start a conversation with Kobe about your sexuality if you feel obligated and forced and like he's going he's gonna to make you do something that you don't want to do. That's not safe. So why would you go open up and tell him who you are and talk about and, and have those conversations with him when, when it's, that safety's not there? Yeah, right? risky. It's, yeah, it's too risky. So, you know... Oh, go ahead, Kobe. <laughs> I, I, for everybody who's just like, there's some of you who are watching, um, but you're probably seeing like, wow, Kobe's gears are like a million miles a minute. And, and I feel like that. So for those of you who are listening, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm connecting dots and I'm realizing <laughs> that it's like, what else did we expect? Right? Like I'm looking at Ashlyn and, and we're just kind of sharing this case. Like what else did we expect when we... <laughs> Like you said, okay, I'll be vulnerable enough with you to have sex with you, but, that's but I'm not going to be vulnerable enough to actually talk about it. Are you kidding? Are that's you kidding me? Well, well, let's. So, so what is sexual intimacy based on? Because when we talk about talking about sex, mm -hmm. we're talking about sexual intimacy. So, so what is what is the basis for healthy sexual intimacy in a relationship? What's the ba the foundation of that? Communication. Okay, communication. Safety, so, trust. Yeah. Okay, so so let's back up even further. Oh. How do you create safety and trust? <laughs> no, you no, you nailed it, actually. How how do you how do you create safety and trust in the relationship so that you can have those conversations about sex? I think that's the dying question from everyone listening. <laughs> <laughs> right, because because you might be listening thinking, Oh my gosh, I don't want to listen to this episode because I'm gonna have to go have this conversation with my spouse tonight. Um, that's not true. Start where you need to start. And maybe you need to start on the trust and safety in your relationship. So what builds trust and safety? We go over this all the time. Um, it's, it, you know, it's being authentic. It's having integrity in that relationship, being honest, being empathetic, and um, working to be able to connect to that other person in a healthy way and so that there is safety there. Um, and you do that consistently over time, again and again and again. Then... There's safety to talk about hard things with each other. So it's got to start there. It doesn't just start with, hey, let's talk about your deepest, most crazy fantasies. That you know, It's got to start there with the trust and safety. But see, that's where my addict, I'm just thinking back to when I was really in addiction. It was like I wanted, I, I either didn't want to talk about sex because it was so hard, or I wanted to just go to the very other end of the spectrum and be all in and talk about my fantasies but the idea of just having a dialogue about sex without delving into my, you know, my, okay, my okay, most so, grandiose fantasies. So there's is, a difference, but is, is, Kobe, there's a difference between talking about sex mm -hmm. and trying to talk to somebody because you're acting out sexually. To like, yeah, completely. Right? I, I'm, right. I'm, I'm, yes, I agree with you 100%. And I'm trying to, what I'm trying to say is, is the latter of what you just described was me. 
Right, right, right. right. It was just like, I just wanted to go there all in, in effort to like have sex with you, Ashlyn, in the way that I wanted. But the idea of actually having a dialogue, like a, just an open, yeah. open discourse, like an open conversation that's safe and it's, it's vulnerable, it was never on my mind. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. So is, is it bad if you want to talk about sex because you want to have sex? Sex is bad. Why am I going to talk about it? <laughs> okay, and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> but did you hear my question? Is it bad that you want to talk about sex because you want to have sex? No. Is that Definitely bad? Definitely not. No, okay. Um, I think you got to be careful with any expectations or agendas that you have. For sure. See, you know, I, um, that's what I hear when he was in addict mode and he wanted to go from... There was always an agenda. Yes. Zero to a hundred. Like, let's skip all of zero to 99 and actually connect i would just want to tell you what i need and want yeah right? let's do this it's, right it's a different um motive it's your intentions are more self-serving and more <laughs> all okay all it's disconnected <laughs> yeah and so it isn't a like a that isn't a safe conversation to have and that's why it wasn't ever <laughs> like when we would try to have these conversations it was hard and it was like explosions because mm -hmm. you're kind of defended and, yeah. and like not wanting to do things that you don't want to do so you're trying to like hold him off yeah you know and there was like he said this was when he was in addict mode mm -hmm. yeah. so there was no safety and trust like there's you manipulation mm -hmm. to try to get it so it yeah. was like this confusing pull so if you're there if that's where you're at and you're listening brand is right on you yeah. cannot jump ahead yeah. and feel safe it's like yeah. i can't start from the uh, at the public pool I, I i didn't want to start at the ladder to get in the pool i wanted immediately to go to the 10 meter high dive and jump into the pool that way <laughs> yeah and to, to jump into the topic that was exactly but but, but there's a reason for i didn't that. know there was a ladder well there's a reason for that that i could crawl down into the pool with. there's a reason for that it's uh you know this this sexual intimacy in terms of talking about sex uh -huh. is 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 vulnerable it's work and it's easier to jump off the deep end and yeah. just go straight to the, the fantasy or the lustful place or the dopamine hit. And it's easier to just go there than, yeah. it, than it is to connect and really see each other yeah. and understand each other on that level. So, one, of the, one of the hardest things we've done this month in September, um, which you would think would be like having sex every day, which we haven't done. <laughs> but one of the hardest things that I've done was actually being um, vulnerable enough to just share things with you, Ashlyn, that I haven't talked about before, and um, it's it it was it it just took um, a lot of courage to just say, okay, here's the topic. This is what I want to touch on, and um, but but it's been a really important thing for me this month to stretch myself and say, hey, I do want to talk about this, and this is important for me, and I think that has added a different. Um, a different kind of intimacy in September that we have that we didn't experience last September. Yeah, last last one was different, and yes. the focus kind of has has shifted into a more gray area yeah. for us this year, which has been healthy and yeah. really inviting for safety and trust. Um, so yeah, it's, well, I, I was kind of compelled though. If I I'll just this is a little tangent. Compelled meaning um, because this is September, I'm going to be really vulnerable and, and share this. But um, I take sertraline, which is an anti-anxiety, anti-depression medication, and that's that has inhibited my ability to orgasm, and that was hard for that's been hard for me to face, and, and it's been a challenging topic for both of us. But what it has done is it's compelled us to have more conversations about sex and for me to be more open and transparent like ash i know that this may seem like i'm acting out because i can't orgasm what what a blessing but, but all, the, all the wives legit. are running out right now buying their husbands that <laughs> that medication <laughs> but it also had him like oh i'm going to be proactive about my sexuality rather yes. than just sit here and be like well it's the medication i'm taking well it, yeah. it brings up another point which yeah. is is you know se sex being all about orgasm is a problem um, you know, it's all about the end result or the release. And when mm -hmm. we talk about talking about sex, that talking about sex can be part of the lovemaking. Yeah. Uh, that's really a, an enjoyable part of sex. You're saying talking about. Talking about sex yeah. can be part of the lovemaking. Yes, and totally it, agree. And so if you're just focused on, okay, how do I, 
how do I eventually work this so that I can get off? Mm -hmm. um, it comes back to what you were saying earlier, Ashlyn, where it feels self-serving yeah. and like you're being used. Yeah. When you can learn how to talk about sex, mm -hmm. talk about your vulnerabilities there, the other person feels connection to you. They can see you. And Is it feels really good. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. We need those open conversations. <laughs> <laughs> but I had to be compelled to do that. And what Ashlyn proved to me, so this is this is a, a peek behind the curtain for both the addict and the betrayed. I'm just this is coming from Kobe's mind. Is um, if you are the if you are the addicted thinking or the indulgent thinking, okay, my partner is going to be triggered by by sharing what I'm thinking, by sharing my my insecurities and my fears remember that it's more than likely that your partner will probably connect with you as you're vulnerable for sharing those things. And if you're the betrayed and um, you're thinking, oh my gosh, what, what's my partner going to share with me? Um, there's a real opportunity to connect by sharing the things that, that are hard to. But it, yeah, I like what you said. It goes both ways because that's kind of how ours began as we started to build safety and trust was that I was willing to be open enough to say, I have to stop right now mm -hmm. or I don't yes. feel safe right now. Yeah. That was vulnerable in itself. Yeah. And for him to choose to show up in those moments really did like catapult us into a different arena than what we were in by not sharing those totally. things. Be being boundaried is critical to being able to do this. So you have to you have to be able to know that yes you can say no mm -hmm. you can you can be honest about your feelings and where you're at and if you know that you can step up in in your boundaries and be authentic in those in those conversations then you'll be willing to go much deeper and 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 have those conversations right deeper yeah. okay so <laughs> Ashlyn has her hand in my face <laughs> so come on it's sex timber Ashlyn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what if you are listening and you've built the safety and trust? So okay. you are ready to have the conversation, but you're not there. Like, you're not even sure how to do it. How do you start? Yeah. That's a Is great question. Is there, like, a good transitional statement? Um, that, <laughs> yes, I think. <laughs> but, but really, just step into it. It might be awkward and have fun with the awkwardness. Um, but just be willing, just sit. I, I, I'd, I'd go pretty directly and just say, hey, we haven't talked about sex much. I listen to this podcast. I'd like to talk to you about sex, right? Um, but, you know, I, I wouldn't... It's, it's like when I teach about talking to your kids about sex. If I go to my 11-year-old daughter and I'm, like, all awkward and uncomfortable and, you know, f freaking out, my daughter's going to pick up on that and be like, oh, my gosh, I want out of this conversation. <laughs> Um, but if I'm able to rein my energy in, um, feel confident, then I'm much more likely to have a productive conversation with her. Same thing with, um, with our spouses or, or relationships. If I'm able to go to my wife and, and say, look, I'm comfortable talking about sex and I'd love to talk about sex with you. Um, or just, just bring up a certain topic or, or some way that it came up and be comfortable in that, she's much more likely to want to stay in that conversation with me. Ashlyn proved that point, actually, um, when we were driving home from the Oregon coast over the summer, because she brought this book, and it was like um, 30 days of talking to your kids about sex or something like that. Is that what it was? Something like that. I don't remember. And um, so Ashlyn didn't, she had to be brave enough to say, okay, we're going to read this book. And she showed the girls the book, and they were like, uh, but the cool part is, is Ashlyn, you didn't have to come up with anything yourself. You didn't have to come up with your own expert words. You were reading the words of the expert. So you didn't have to be the expert or have the pressure of trying to know exactly what you're saying. You just read it. And so the conversation that we had with those girls and reading a topic or just reading you know, a handful of pages was awesome. And they were totally attentive. And we, I think we were talking about like wet dreams or something like that. And our girls were like on point and they were engaged and we just had a conversation. And so I would say if it's really hard to have a conversation, then just find find a um i guess a therapist that has either talking points or a book with talking points there, there there's all kinds of topics within this topic too. Uh -huh. so you know it's one thing for me to talk to my wife about you know hey i want to have sex tonight right um it's another thing for me to say hey here's my my fears around sex here's my shame around sex here's here's my fantasies here's you know 
it, it, there's there's different topics, and de depending on the topic, um, it really depends on the amount of trust and safety that you have, mm -hmm. whether it's going to go in good or not, right? right. So, so my guess is you're giving us this, you know, statement. Just go into it, step into it, and, yeah. and try it. But we're probably not going to step into like all the topics that I've been carrying around no, on my back. No, 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 <laughs> right? Uh -uh. We're going to take it one topic at a time. Maybe you start with why is it so hard for us to talk about sex? That's a great place to start. And okay. then you'll get into talking about trust in your relationship and, and you know maybe struggles with your communication. And, and so it could lead into other areas of intimacy, but you're, you're just talking about why is it so hard to talk about yeah. sex. Um, and then it can, it can go from there. Um, but yeah, you don't need to dive into the deep end, like what Kobe was saying. Um, take, those, take the ladder and take one step at a time. And try to meet your partner where they're at. Um, don't force them to have conversations that they don't want to have and try to meet them where they're at. I think also realizing that this is, um, if the end to, if, if you want to have a conversation about sex because you want sex, I think you really have to be honest and just speak that. Yes. Um, because that will bring a different energy and a different mindset to the conversation that won't necessarily be as productive as it could be. Okay, could this happen? I love what you just said, Kobe. I want to have a conversation about sex because I want to eventually. I want. Well, I want to have sex tonight. Okay, that's really honest, really direct. Now the partner could then say, "Hey, I'm willing to have a conversation with you about sex, but I don't want sex tonight." Okay, so now they're at odds with each other. Okay, so then what do they do? Well, they for, have the conversation. Yeah. Yes, that's it. <laughs> they and they it. and they see where it goes. You know, it might end up no. They cuddle. They cuddle that night, mm -hmm. or, or they learn know, something they new learn about each other. Or they might have passionate sex because now the other partner feels connected to and safe and didn't feel forced. Who knows? But you, you're you're mindful in that moment and yeah. you watch to see what happens when you have that intimacy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of us. Yeah. Um, yeah. You have to let down some of those walls. And I know for Kobe and I, we both had a lot of walls. Yeah. around even talking about sex and we were pointing fingers at each other saying you have walls and that's why we don't talk about sex that doesn't help do your own <laughs> do your own work so that you can take those walls down and have those conversations yeah. you might you might want to it's kind of similar to our our topic last week you might want to blame the other person for the reasons why you're not having those conversations and I'd look in the mirror first and say what is it what is it about you how are you not showing up safe how are you not showing up honest uh, and vulnerable with these topics and and face your fears. Yeah, I will say this when I started bringing up the conversations of sex, which was very unusual for me I had never been that girl um, But for me to bring those things up. I had to sit in what the heck I was feeling what my fears were what I Fantasized about those types of things before I even felt like I could go to Kobe and so yes. that helped me to just process on my own. I didn't have figure to figure yourself therapy. out. Yeah, just yes. like sit in it and figure yourself out and then go and have a productive conversation. And it's scary when you're not the person who's normally bringing it up to yes. say, I'm going to bring it up. Um, so I, I think setting some fair expectations like what you just shared, Brandon. And it, it, I'm, not, I'm fine with talking about sex. I'm not going to have sex with you. Right. And, and that can even be in a place where you're like, I'm really, there really is not a lot of trust. And I think that might be a really important time to have a conversation because sex isn't just for when things are going well. Having the conversations about sex when things are hard absolutely are like building blocks of um, intimacy and connection that can eventually lead to that place. But remember, absolutely. this is an ongoing, this is like a practice. Mm -hmm. You can even consider having a daily conversation about sex as a daily absolutely where you could find hey I want you know 365 topics in a book about sex and we're gonna talk about are it you gonna write that book I, it sounds like he's going to <laughs> I love it okay I'm writing a book <laughs> um, I'm a little motivated I gotta tell you <laughs> I love it <laughs> um, I will also say this one thing that's really helped me in being able to talk about these things is if you're willing to have these conversations even if you are the one saying I don't want to talk about it or I'll talk about it, but I don't want to have sex. I don't mm -hmm. feel safe or whatever your, your thing is. The ability to say out loud, both to yourself and to your mate, 
I'm not there, but I, I'm so willing to talk about this. Yeah. That was like a reminder to myself and to Kobe. Mm -hmm. This is me loving you. This is me showing yes. up. So if you're able to start to move into those areas, it isn't your partner rejecting you. Right. It's their, your partner having a lot of stuff they're feeling, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. so step into that. Awesome. awesome. I love it. So appreciate you guys being here. Um, and here's what's cool. There is an opportunity for everybody listening to come join a live Q&A with Ashlyn, Brandon, and myself on the topic of September. And uh, if you go to patreon.com and you search for Betrayed Addicted Expert, you can find our, pro you can find our profile there. And then you can still join in um, on uh, those live Q&As where you can actually interact with us. You can you know, see us, you can talk with us, ask questions, and if you're like, no way I want to be seen, you can just use the chat function and, and chat live with, uh, with one of us. That's a great function for, uh, for members who are over on Patreon. So um, again, guys, thanks for being here. Thanks. See Bye -bye. you guys. Happy September. You guys want to say hi to Ben? He was on here. Ben, oh. what's hey, up? Ben, ben, thanks for being here. How you doing, bro?